Hey everybody, in this video we're going to talk about configuring and troubleshooting ISDN PRI services as we use them for voice in a Cisco router. As I'm sure you're well aware already through your studies and to this point in your certification track, ISDN services are used around the world for all kinds of voice. You know, we've used them for data, we've used them for lots of stuff, and still very, very popular with voice, especially here where I'm at in the United States. Uh, in the U.S., we use T1-based PRI services where we have 23 audio channels, or what we call bearer channels or B channels, and we have one D channel, uh, which is used for call signaling. Uh, on an E1, if you're in the uh, European area, you're going to have uh, a few more time slots than we do, and uh, you're actually going to have an uh, opportunity to use uh, more channels for signaling. I um, did some E1 stuff years ago, and... Uh, had some eye openers there, a little bit different than here in the States. But uh, either way, the concepts we're going to talk about here you know, remain constant and they apply to both T1 and E1 PRI you know, with minor modifications. So what you're going to notice here, I'm on a Cisco 2811 router and I'm going to do a show diag and show you exactly what we're dealing with here. So this is a 2811. I have got a 16 channel um, PVDM2 module, so it's the PVDM2-16. That gives me 16 DSP resources to play with, which uh, if you're playing the numbers game, you're going to realize isn't enough DSP resources to configure the full PRI of all 23 channels. And that's okay because I'm only going to set it up as a fractional PRI. We're going to program 12 time slots here. And uh, so we've got the PVDM, and you'll notice some WIC slot 0 that I've got that VWIC 2 MFT T1, uh, one of my favorite cards of all time. Um, I love those multiplex trunk cards. They work amazing for voice and data. So slot 000 is how we're going to number that bad boy. And the configuration itself is actually pretty basic. Um, again, we're assuming that you have basic operational knowledge of uh, ISDN at a uh, data level, or at least a physical level. If you understand that it's a T1, connected to an ISTN switch at the central office and uh, connected to a piece of customer premise equipment at the customer site. We're going to go ahead and go config T and we'll say controller T1000 and we're going to say PRI group time slots 1 through 12 comma 24. So I'm going to allocate 12 time slots for audio use or bearer channels for voice calls and one time slot, number 24, for signaling. Now, you'll notice on the PRI group, or on the controller, Cisco is counting starting with the base of one. So the first time slot is one. When I actually typed this command, we created a virtual voice port. Now, Cisco's numbering for those voice ports starts at zero. So you're going to see it referred to as voice port 0 slash 0 slash 0 colon 23. Don't get confused. This is the 24th time slot of this T1 PRI that we're using for signaling. 23 is simply a consequence of Cisco starting their numbering scheme with a base of 0 instead of a base of 1. So I want to clear up any confusion we've got there. So I've done a controller T1000. I've defined a PRI group. And uh, if you take a look here, show run pipe include voice port You'll see that a voice port 000 colon 23 has been created on this router. Now, we haven't configured any dial peers. We can't make any calls or take any calls or anything like that yet. But just by creating that voice peer, or I'm sorry, that voice port, I should be able to take a look at the status of this ISDN PRI circuit and let's see if it's up and available. Two commands you're going to use to verify this. You know, there, there's other debugs and commands you'll get into if you're having problems, but if everything's going right, a show ISDN status is going to uh, take you a long way. We're going to see here, in fact, this is indicating that I have missed a step, and my layer 1 on that controller is actually physically shut down. You'll see a layer 2 status here of TEI assigned. Well, that's telling me that I've got my terminal endpoint identifier assigned to me, but what I'm really looking for here is multiple frame established. Now, since I don't have that, and since I can see my layer 1 status here is shut down, we're going to go ahead and take care of that. By going config T, we'll say controller T1000, no shutdown. That should bring the controller into service. And when I run this show ISDN status again, now you're going to see layer 1 status is active. 
and you're going to see the state of multiple frame established. So multiple frame established means that my D channel is in service. It means that things are going really well because I'm talking to the ISDN switch. Now, I have already got, and I should have shown you this as part of one of the steps, but this router was actually pre-configured for something I was testing here a little bit earlier. Show run pipe include switch. I actually have a command here, and I've done it um, globally, and then uh, you can also apply it more granularly if you've got multiple circuits, but we've set the ISDN switch type. My provider um, would be providing a primary national ISDN switch type, so that's what we've used. You know, depending on what region of the world you're in, whether you're on a T1 PRI or an E1 PRI, what you use for that ISDN switch type might change, but for my scenario here, it's primary NI. Um, let's take a show run here, and let's find where that other one is. It is most likely... Let's see what we've got here. Right here on the serial 00023 interface that we just created. So again, um, and, and this changed a little bit over the years in different versions of iOS, but if you set it globally, you don't have to set it at the interface as well in most versions of iOS. However, you can support multiple circuits from multiple providers. There's some other gotchas to that, but I'm not going to get into those right now. But uh, as far as having the flexibility to change your ISDN switch type, you absolutely have that capability. So we've created the interface, uh, or we've, we've gone to the, uh, the interface here. We did the controller, which created the voice port, which created the interface. So all is good there. We can see that our D channel is up. There's actually one more command I want to show you here, show ISDN service. This is going to indicate to us, remember I said that we were using just 12 time slots of this PRI? So if you look at the first 12 channels, you'll see that they are in a state of idle, while all of the remaining ones are in a state of reserved. So that's to be expected. You'll also notice that the first 12 channels are in service, whereas the remainder are out of service. So everything is as is expected as of currently. So ISDN's up. I'm going to go ahead and do a real quick configuration to the dial peer that's there. And I forget the number, so we'll take a look here. Show dial peer peer voice summary and take a look at the dial peers. So my POTS dial peer is dial peer voice 100 with a destination pattern of 9P. That's great. That's really flexible for us. So we're going to go to dial peer voice 100 POTS and we'll say port 000 colon 23. So we've told that dial peer to reference the D channel um, on that interface and uh, I think I've got the rest of that dial peer configured. Let's take a look here. Show, run, pipe, begin, dial, peer, voice. And dial peer voice 100 pots. We've got a destination pattern of 9T. Incoming called number dot means we're going to be able to match any incoming called numbers uh, to this dial peer, preventing the use of the dial peer zero, that default dial peer that we want to avoid. We've got direct inward dial configured, which is going to allow the router to select the next dial peer for the next call leg based on the DNS digits that are presented. Uh, that's very important. If we didn't have direct inward dial, we would be greeted with a second dial tone, which is not what we want. And then obviously we point it to the port. So we're pretty much ready to go. Now that I gave that dial peer a, uh, a port here, we'll do another show dial peer voice summary. We show the status as being up. And I'm going to attempt to make a test call. Now here on my system, I've actually got a uh, call manager configured, and I've got an IP phone here, and then I've got a POTS phone. The POTS phone is on my PSDN, which I happen to simulate using an Adtran Atlas 550. Uh, lots of choices for simulation of PSDN. Um, we'll get into that in another video. But uh, I'm simulating the PSDN, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up the phone, and I'm going to dial four digits. Those four digits are going to be passed as the DNS for the incoming call. And my IP phone should ring. Now before I do this, I'm going to go ahead and turn on a debug. Again, this is part of the troubleshooting piece here. So we'll say debug ISDN Q931. I'm going to make the call, and if it's successful, we'll go ahead and examine the debug, and I'll show you exactly what's going on there. So I'm picking up the telephone now. I'm dialing extension 1700, and I'm going to go ahead and hit pound. And interesting, I'm actually being met with a fast busy, which is not what I expected. So um, let's take a look at my, um, let's see here. 
I didn't get any debugs. I'm telling it it in. Let me turn on terminal monitor. I'm not going to get a whole lot of debugging if I don't have terminal monitoring enabled because this is a telnet session. So we're going to call 1700 again. Ah, there it goes. I must not have been completely up. So the phone is ringing, the analog set is ringing, and you can hear in the background, my IP telephone is ringing. And if I answer it, you're going to hear, hello, hello, hello. And um, it's a speakerphone here. Hello, hello, hello. So all is well. And I'll go ahead and hang that call up. If I scroll back here slightly, we'll show you exactly what happened. So you saw on the debug, once I turned terminal monitor on, you saw the bearer capability, you saw the channel ID preferred, we saw the signaling channel 23, we show calling party number not available, and that's because I'm not presenting caller ID on this particular call. You show the called party number is 1700, again that's the DNS, that's actually what I dialed on my uh, POTS phone. I've got it set up so that any DNS that I dial is presented exactly as I dial it and uh, rings in on the PRI, comes in really handy for testing. So anyway, you'll show that we, with Q931, we received a setup message, we received a call proceeding message, we received an alerting message, which indicates it was ringing the phone, and finally, we saw connect and a connect acknowledgement. I talked, I did my hello, 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 and then we received a disconnect. We showed the disconnect cause as a normal call clearing, and then we show ISDN disconnected, and we see the release. So. Everything about this call was extremely normal. This is what we would expect to see on an ISDN PRI uh, configured for voice calls. You got to see the use of some debug commands. Now, if I had other ISDN problems, we'll turn that debug off. Another useful debug, debug ISDN Q921. This is going to show me the layer 2 signaling of what's happening on the ISDN. So you're going to see, you know, transmit, receive, um, you know, we can see the terminal endpoint identifier zero, et cetera, et cetera. And this is going to continue to happen you know, with all the keep alive on ISDN and everything. But, you know, the thing's alive, it's working. We don't need to debug layer two when layer three is functioning. So, you know, and most of the time that D channel pops right up and you don't do a lot of layer two troubleshooting. Um, you know, most of the time, I'd say 95 plus percent of the time, you know, if that D channel comes in service and you've got multiple frame established, and we'll show an ISDN status, if you've got this multiple frame established, that sucker's just going to work. So, you know, things are good here on this, uh, this ISDN PRI. And uh, that's a, a quick little primer of how to configure and troubleshoot an ISDN PRI on a Cisco voice gateway. I hope this has been informative to you and uh, look forward to talking to you on uh, the next video. And we'll see you soon.